Hey guys, this is Tony from Good Japan, Bad Japan. This is a teaching English in Japan related episode, so I've got to give you your item of the day. That item of the day is Shiobun Chaji, and I'm sure my pronunciation is awful. Shiobun Charge. So that's the first character, Shiobun. Salt content. These are little tablets. They taste like Smarties, like sugar candy. And people take these during the summertime. These are on sale during the summertime to help with heat stroke. So if you're going to be out in the hot weather, it doesn't hurt to take one of these to just kind of make sure you're getting the right, I guess, vitamins or minerals so that you don't have a heat stroke accident. So this Teaching English in Japan episode is about me preparing for a laser procedure that I'm going to have very soon. And actually, the, at the time of this video, I will be currently in the hospital for a two and a half day stay, two nights. And that's kind of what I'm here to talk about. And this is a Teaching English in Japan episode because as someone coming over as an expat, I want you to know how much a procedure like this could cost you. And this is something that could very easily happen to you. You're in a foreign country, you're in Japan, and you have something big that's health related and you don't understand the language, things are confusing. So that's, that's why I'm here. I just kind of want to share my experience as I'm going through it so that hopefully my knowledge that I'm sharing can be of use to you in the future. Okay, so just to give you some background, if you've seen my going to the eye doctor video, you already know that I went to an eye doctor to get checked out and that doctor diagnosed me with, uh, what what's it called? Cent Central serous chorioretinopathy or CSC for short and so I've got water buildup in my eyes that's getting worse. And the more it builds up, the worse my vision is getting. So I was given an invitation letter or an introduction letter to give to a hospital here in town that has a very good eye doctor. And so I got checked out last weekend by that eye doctor, got a second opinion. They ran all the same tests, but... They ran one bonus test and I had to sign a waiver for that bonus test because they were going to inject me with uh, some fluid that was going to allow them to really get at the heart at what my problem is in my eyes. And, you know, it's all in Japanese and they're trying to explain it. And I just said in Japanese to them. So essentially, this is the form that says, when you put this this fluid in me, if it kills me, the hospital is not liable. Is that correct? And they go, mm, yeah. I'm like, okay, that's probably pretty standard for most drugs. So go ahead and shoot me up. So they put that in me. Uh, it, I, I nearly threw up. Uh, I guess most people have a similar reaction. So once once I started feeling really sick, they, they started putting like a counter drug in there to, to help calm my body down, but the doctor got a good look at me and confirmed that it was CSC. And the diagnosis was this. So my left eye, which was a 1.5, but I believe now is a 1.2. And that's why things are getting a little fuzzy. That's having water build up recently. Like this, this is not something that has happened over a long period of time. And the cause could be stress, could be age, but the doctor couldn't pinpoint a cause for this water buildup. So, um, but he did say that there's a good chance this problem could heal on its own in my left eye. So for now, we're not considering any kind of laser treatment, but the right eye for at least several months, because when I got my health check, it was reported at a 0.5. So, so this eye really sucks. Um, and if I cover my left eye, I, I can't really, I can't read anything. So that's the target. So the doctor said, uh, we're going to focus on your right eye. We're going to get at that water because 
there's a part of your eye that isn't doing its job by absorbing that water and that's why it's building up. So that's what the laser's for. We're, we're going we're gonna to target that problem and uh, there's actually a chance that your eyesight could recover and get better in your right eye. So that's what he said. And um, so I signed myself up and like I said at the time of this video, I should be in a hospital room. And just real quick, that eye doctor video from before, I think I said it was like 3,500 yen or something for all those tests. I got the same tests plus that bonus one that almost made me sick. And the total cost was 4,330 yen. So I, in my mind, I'm thinking this is fairly reasonable. Okay, so... Before I, I show you some handouts that the hospital gave me that show me uh, preparation, things that I need to bring, etc. Uh, before I forget, doctor number one gave me an envelope to give to doctor number two to, to let doctor number two know what doctor number one found out. This is information from doctor number two for me to give to doctor number one. And so feel free to comment. This seems like a very primitive form of communication. How, how's a phone call, shared database, anything? Just to let doctor number one know what's going on with me, I have to hand deliver a letter or stamp it and send it through the post office. So in my mind, that seems pretty primitive. Also, before I forget, I mentioned I have to stay in the hospital for two nights. And the reason for this is because I'm going to be injected with something that's going to help the laser do its job. The doctor said my eye is going to be held open for exactly 82 seconds while this procedure takes place. They must have this down to a science if they, they have it down to exactly 82 seconds. But... I'm sure I won't be allowed to close my eye during that time. I have been told that from the moment the procedure is finished, my eye will not need to be covered in any way. And I will be taken to my hospital room, which will look like a mini hotel room. And I'm going to YouTube the crap out of that. I'm going to show you what three meals a day looks like within my jail cell of a, of a hospital room. But... I was told I need to be there for two nights because the drug they're injecting me with will stay in my system for 48 hours and exposure to sunlight will be very painful. And I assume this is fairly typical for those who get laser eye procedures of any kind. But just to kind of ensure that I will be okay, I'm going in on a Friday morning getting the procedure, staying two nights, and then Sunday evening, once the sun has gone down, and it's summertime, so we're talking probably 8 p.m., then I will be allowed to leave and go home, and then I can go to work the next day. So what do I need to bring in order you know, to stay in this hospital room for two nights? So that's what I'm going to show you now, and I'm going to show you a very helpful document if you're an expat that might save you a lot of money because the number that I was given for this procedure, the cost, 130,000 yen. So I want you to think about that. Laser eye procedure, and it's called a PDT. You can Google PDT. That's what I'm getting in this eye about $1,200 American, and that's including the, the hospital room stay and, and the food, etc. So now let me go ahead and show you some more details. Okay, so I hope everyone is seeing this okay. It says, high cost medical expense benefit, eligibility certificate for ceiling amount application, or Kogaku Ryoyohi Seido. So this is very important because this could save me a lot of money. As long as I'm spending a minimum amount on a healthcare procedure, I might be eligible for a discount. So I'm going to be letting all of you know in a future video 
how much money I've saved as a result of this form if I am successful in applying. So first, I have to pay for the procedure so that I have an amount that I can get like a rebate or refund from. So remember this, kogaku ryoyohi seido. All right, next, we've got regarding entering, regarding payment and entering the hospital. The main point here is that I have to pay 30,000 yen up front. The rest will come later. And regarding what I need to bring, pajamas, underwear, sundries. So this is shampoo, rinse, soap, uh, toothbrush, and of course toothpaste, tissues. This is a water container. So some sort of cup or drinking container, maybe a canteen. Also, uh, this also says cup. Sripa, so slippers. I need slippers because it's Japan. A bath towel and then a regular towel, about two or three regular towels. Megusuri, eye drops. And this is just uh, everyday medicine. So if you're taking pills for any other condition or, you know, I'm just taking multivitamins, but uh, if you are taking medicine for something else, be sure to bring that. And my Incon. So I had a video. Do you need, do you need a hunko? Well, guess what? I'm going to need my hunko for this. My wife and I have no idea why they put pot here. So I think that's a little irrelevant. So they, they also gave me this big book and I wonder if Visidine is what I'm actually being injected with. But this is all about this is all about the PDT scan. Very extensive handbook. And they talk a lot about the eye. Maybe before and after the procedure, don't smoke. Always a good idea when you're going to have surgery of some kind. Protective eyewear, protective body wear from the sun. Always important. Okay, this is Fukusayo. Fukusayo, this is side effects. And so, um, 64, let's see, Fukusayo, 42.2% experience some sort of side effect is what that looks like. 59 incidents. I don't know what that's dated from. Okay, here are the important things. For two days, two days, no sunlight. That's okay. Maybe if you've got an Apple Watch. Well, I can't leave my hospital room, but that kind of light is bad. Very bad. Watch out for the sun. Night is okay. Don't, don't peek in the curtains. Indoor light is fine, so that's going to be nice. Uh, my laptop, my smartphone, in, indoor lighting is going to be perfectly safe. My eyes shouldn't hurt at all. I guess neon, neon is not good after this type of procedure. Don't operate photocopiers. <laughs> uh, looks like this is okay. Uh, good reading light. Certain types of lanterns are bad. Uh, things like my, my lighting that I use for YouTube, I can't use headlights. This, I think, is, this might be halogen. I have to, because this, this says halogen right here. So halogen might be really bad for the eyes. And I think that's all, all the main stuff I wanted to show. But they give you a nice big old book. All right, so that was, that was everything in terms of the prep. Uh, my wife and I have already started putting things off to the side. I've got a bunch of cans of coffee, uh, little little cans of coffee, Boss Coffee, uh, Coca Cola, just because my my room will have a mini fridge, and so for two and a half days, I kind of want to en enjoy myself as much as I possibly can when I can't leave my room for two and a half days. That's my question for you, and feel free to comment if you are stuck in a hotel room 
for two and a half days. How do you pass the time? Now, I am going to be very lucky in, in the fact that I can look at computer screens all day long. So I'm going to work on making a lot of YouTube videos. I've been doing a lot of filming. Now I've got nothing but time to edit. I can watch a lot of Netflix. I can study Japanese. Maybe my eyes will be good enough to where I can start writing again and I can read stuff. We'll, we'll see about that. But if you're trapped, how do you spend the time? What do you bring with you? Assume that you can only bring a small carry-on and a backpack. Uh, thanks very much for watching this. If you've been through any type of eye procedure in your life, I'd appreciate any comments. Tell me about your experience. Was it good or bad? Did it work? Did it not work? How much did it cost? Knowledge is power. And if you've had any kind of uh, medical procedure in Japan and you feel like sharing, put that in there too. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you hit that like button and subscribe and hit that bell for future notifications and I'll see you next time. <laughs>